Welcome to the Market Mystics Podcast. I'm Joshua. I'm Kim. Let's dive in. Hey, hey. What up? How's it going? It's going good. If you've noticed, I've been wearing the same clothes for the last three episodes. <laughs> we talked as about you will. <laughs> <laughs> we talked about this uh, when we started recording today. Um because we were talking about clothes that you wear that aren't clean enough to go back in the closet or back on the hanger or back in the drawer, but they're not dirty enough that you need to wash them. And so I have like a clothes basket in my closet that I put those in. And Kim has a chair. She puts them in. I call them chair clothes. Yeah. Yeah. So I want to know, listeners, if you guys do this and what you call those clothes or do you not care? Is that not a thing for you? Is that just a... (laughs) I totally think it's a thing. I'd be curious to hear other people's perspective too, but I totally think it's a thing. Yeah. It's kind of like there are certain things that all women do. You don't talk about it, but there are certain things that all women do. Well most women do. Uh, and it's just a thing. It's just kind of universal. We don't talk about it, but we all do it. And there's actually nothing shameful about it. Yeah. The one I'm thinking about is like when we wash our hair, instead of letting the hair go down the drain that like comes out, you put it on the shower wall and then you swirl it afterwards and you throw it away. Yeah. It's a thing. Uh, and I didn't know other people did that. I just do it because I don't want to clog drain. It's like you adapt. It's the human condition. We adapt to <laughs> to issues, make things yeah. more efficient, right? That's funny. But I think the chair clothes or the like the not clean, not dirty clothes is also one of those things. I think more people do it than we think. Probably so. So listeners, prove us wrong or right. Or just let us know. Or just let us know. Um, well, if you caught our last episode, we were talking about finding the gold in situations um, and what that. Um, so sometimes you're going through trials and you're like, man, there's gold everywhere here. And then sometimes you're in a moment that feels a bit more comfortable and you have to look a little bit harder to find gold because it's just a little bit more comfortable. And Kim, you had a great follow-up question. So let's, let's dive into that. Okay. So my follow-up question was if it's easy when things are, when times are tough to find the revelation or the gold and when it's difficult, more difficult when things are easier and just more comfortable is it because there needs to be a balance Mm -hmm. in the uh, ease of use i suppose or something like that right so is that why there's such a vast difference in like how easy it is to gain the perspective when it's hard and how uh, you have to dig a little further when it's easy um is Mm -hmm. it just because we need to maintain some balance and that is my question Yeah. No, I think it's a great question. And I like my mind goes immediately to like, um, to like going to the gym and when you're going to the gym and you're lifting weights and you're resting in between sets, like there's, there's different thought processes on the best way to do it and how long to wait and what that looks like. Um, but one way that has been used by a lot of bodybuilders is to wait like maybe twice as long as you might think you need to in between sets. Um, Mm -hmm. And what that does is like really allows your muscles to get back to a total place of rest and have way more recovery. And then your next set is actually way more, uh, has way more impact in your body Hmm. than if you're pushing it from an already strained point of view, like the minerals and the chemicals that your body needs to build muscle, like more of them are available if you wait an extra couple minutes. And, um, so I do think that in growth, 
it's so necessary to have that sense of balance because it's just like, it's destructive if you're just like pushing, 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 like that's, it's destructive to you. And so I think that piece of balance, that element of balance is like, man, that's so important. Hmm. Do you think it goes back to energy? I just wonder, like, is there a certain level of energy that we need to maintain? And so if we're really struggling in this one area and spending a lot of energy on that, then other things uh, Mm. will in turn need to use less energy Yeah, and vice versa. If we're not using much energy in the day to day, do we need to then expend more energy to pull out the other things so that Mm. it stays in balance? Is that a thing? I don't know. Energy. Maybe so. Uh, I, I also think that just on a day-to-day basis, you start the day with like X amount of energy, with just whatever you want to call that. You start out with like buckets of energy or whatever, maybe five buckets of energy, 10 buckets of energy, whatever, whatever you want to call it. <laughs> um, hundred bits of, of energy, whatever. Um, and that everything you do is is consuming it and some of it consumes it quicker some of it consumes it less some of it brings energy back in like and i so i do think that there is um i think one of the biggest aspects of life is energy management Hmm. like how are you stewarding your energy are you constantly pushing yourself to zero every day? Are you leaving some reserve? Are you allowing recovery? Um, so when you're like in the, like in the conversation where we were talking about like digging for gold, uh, in a situation, like, are you allowing yourself time? Like, I think part of the downtime is you're still finding the gold in what you just went through. Like you're still digging into that time to really get all the gold out of it that you can. And I think if you're just jumping immediately into another stressful situation, did you really mind that situation as well as you could have or should have? Like, are you leaving gold on the table by pushing yourself into the next growth before it's time for the next growth? This is interesting. I mean, it even makes me think about like hormone balance and stuff and how Mm. um, some people, especially in our society in the U.S., are known for living like highly stressful lifestyles, like work, 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 and then work some more. Right. I mean, that's kind of the standard that gets set. Um, And when you do that, like if you work out, exercise is an interesting thing because it uses a lot of energy, but it also produces a lot of energy. And that's a strange mm-hmm. thing, right? Um, it's almost like it's so necessary that your body knows that this is a benefit enough that it's going to refill your energy stores for the day if mm-hmm. you are able to do that. But I think some of the work, 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 work stuff it winds up being so taxing and you put so much energy into that, that then you do wind up empty before you're supposed to be empty for the day. And then you have your body also kicks in, but then it kicks in with things like cortisol Mm -hmm. that says, I mean, it's a fight or flight hormone, right? And it says, oh no, we're in dire need of extra energy. And so it produces it. And it's not always expended the way that it would be if you're actually in a fight or flight situation. You know what I mean? But just living in that constant state of stress or like working, work, work, work. Like I can, I can work really hard. I'm at a desk. I can work real hard on my computer, but I'm not actually spending a lot of like bodily energy. But if the cortisol works in, it's trying to give my body more energy. Right. You know what I mean? And I think that's an interesting thing because it's still this, mm, 
energy management issue, Mm -hmm. right? Like if we push ourselves to where our body has to uh, reconcile and accommodate a lack of energy, even when it wasn't spent in a um, useful way for the whole system. Right. Does that make sense? Yeah, no, I do. There's this whole like energy management thing. I think, and I think it's so key and I think it's so key to growth. Um, Finding like, whether you're talking about your physical body, like find out how your body functions, find out how much energy you start the day with, find out what you can do to increase that number. Like, um, uh, there's someone who I admire who talks about like lowering your boredom threshold um, hmm. so that like you don't need high stimulating things all the time. And so if you lower your boredom threshold, then um, like you can sit and do nothing and be totally fine. And then when you go to do something, you have more store of energy than if you are like dependent on high stimulation to keep you at a neutral level. And so I think finding this, like this balance of how to manage your energy so that your body doesn't have to kick it into overdrive and produce extra energy. I, when you said that, it made me think of like, like the Bible says, like, God's mercy is new every day and we have enough, like, um, we have enough grace for the day. And like, there's a lot of people who talk about anxiety and it's like, well, anxiety is pulling energy from somewhere it doesn't belong. So you're either pulling energy from the past or you're pulling energy from the future. Um, typically anxiety is, is, um, connected to pulling energy from the future and depression is connected from pulling energy from the past, um, Mm -hmm. generally. Um, but like, if you can just live in the energy of today and manage the energy of today without trying to pull energy from somewhere else, like, can you actually, um, can you live in that? Like might be a, like a better life. If you learned to steward that it might like you're talking about the body needing to kick in cortisol, cortisol is a stress hormone. And it's like, it's, um, it's needed at times for sure. Like it's Mm -hmm. really important that your body has it, but if you're constantly kicking your body into that place of needing it, um, then you actually like doing, you can be doing more harm to your body by constantly pushing it to that place. Hmm. Right. Hmm. Hmm. This is interesting. I just, I tend to think living in that place where you're having that have to kick in all the time. It's like living in a state of depletion all the time. Hmm. When really, I do think we're, just in this conversation, I do think we're made to have the amount of energy that we need. Yeah. And we're fully capable of, um, upping that capacity if we so choose to, Mm -hmm. right. By like exercising, like we were talking about, you can exercise, which uses a lot of energy, Mm -hmm. but it also produces more energy. It's, yeah. It, it is a very, it's, it regenerates itself. It's a very strange thing. And so it like, it expands your capacity, but then we use things like, I mean, I'm sitting here, I'm doing it. Listen, we use things like coffee yeah. to replace that like natural ability of upping your energy capacity. And we use things like stimulants to make us think that we have more in our energy stores than we do. Mm. But then isn't there always a crash too, because it was temporary and it's not something that lasts. And then you have to do it all the time. And even with exercise, yes, you should do it, but it's because you're increasing the capacity continually. And 
if you don't exercise for one day, you still have the capacity you had yesterday, Mm -hmm. you know? Yeah. I think exercise is such a, it's such an interesting way, uh, interesting thing to look at in energy management because it consumes a lot of energy and it can consume a lot of energy for the next day or so as your body repairs and builds. But over the long term, it's like digging your energy tank deeper. It's like putting in bigger batteries. It's right. Um, yeah, it's such an interesting thing because it is, it's a lot like the conversation we had on our last episode about like digging for gold. Like you're putting yourself in something that's not enjoyable because you're, you know, there's a purpose behind it. And the purpose behind it is allowing you, will allow you to deal with everything in the future with greater capacity. I mean, like physical exercise can help you deal with emotional stress in a big way. Yeah, Yeah. for sure. And you know what I was, we've talked about this lots of times and I think you mentioned it earlier. It was either earlier in this episode or it might've been in one of the other two we recorded today and all of these same clothes. It's actually not chair clothes. It's fresh clothes. (laughs) You've just seen it it for three episodes. (laughs) It's chair clothes for me. (laughs) Oh, okay. Well, it's fresh clothes for me. Uh, But you were talking about uh, just kind of the immense technology that's held within the human body. Mm. And I think even if we look at exercise as a technology, it really is a wildly valuable technology that Mm. pairs so well with our body. Yeah. Because by spending energy in that way, we then expand how much we can hold and how much Mm. we can then utilize later. And I think even just that, if you look at the human body as a very advanced piece of technology, and I have since I was a kid, I'll just be honest. Like, I remember being a kid and thinking like, how wild is it that we get up and do things and all we have to do is sleep at night. We don't have Mm. to get plugged in. We don't have to like replace batteries any of those things, like we just are continually regenerating. And even within that, we can reproduce as Mm. well, which is also wild. Yeah. Yeah. Like (laughs) I've just like, if you look at it from that point of view, right? Like this technology, it's crazy. But I think that exercise is one of those things that works so well for our bodies. And if I could just shift my perspective truly to seeing exercise as a technology that is so beneficial. I think I'm much more likely to give it welcome space. Yeah. (laughs) Let me just say welcome space in my life, as opposed to like begrudging space, because just like I use my phone all the time, right? It's constantly with me. My phone is with me. I, I'm attuned to it. Um, I go to it for all sorts of things. Like it's the source of lots of information. Um, not necessarily energy, but sometimes like, have you ever had a good conversation with a friend, like over a phone and like it produces good energy, Yeah. but just, I can look at it and see its value. I also see some of the stuff I don't like about it. Like, I don't Mm. love that I'm attached to a piece of electronics. I don't love that I'm available 24 seven. If somebody wants something, I don't love social media and yet it's still there, you know, but can I, do I look at it and still see the value of it and still use every day? I do. So can I do the same with like physical activity and exercise? If I look at it as this valuable piece of technology that pairs so well with this valuable piece of technology, you know, 
I guess that's where I'm going with this. This started out as balance. Mm. Oh, that's great. I I think, I mean, it still is about balance because what we're talking about is like with exercise is increasing your capacity, which allows you to be more balanced. <laughs> like it's true. If you've constantly been pushing yourself to exhaustion and you can suddenly increase your balance, you're not pushing yourself to the limit anymore. That is true. I mean, what if I, what if I no longer like supplement energy with coffee or whatever, whatever, like stimulant of the day, right? Energy drinks, or I don't know. What else do people use? I mean, I guess some people use drugs. Yeah. Yeah. Instead of like having the artificial stimulant, what if I actually use what's built in Mm. and isn't that probably a better, more sustainable thing anyway? Yeah. You know? Yeah. But I mean, I, we could go all into food and all of the things too. Yeah. We Mm. could really go down a rabbit hole with food, Josh. (laughs) We could. I don't think we need to, but I think that we very well could. Yeah. We should be definitely good. <laughs> yeah, no, I think I think this has been a good conversation and it's helped me just kind of wrap my mind more around the importance of balance because like balance is something we talk about a lot. Um, but today it's like, oh yeah, it's not just balance, but it's increasing your capacity, which helps with balance (laughs) like that's such a interesting way to think about it it really is i think my mind when i think about balance i think about a stillness of like being able to hold a position without falling over right right but really in this way it's about like continually evening it out Mm. you know what i mean yeah so even even though there is movement, it's keeping like that. Um, what's the center point called? Fulcrum. The fulcrum in sight. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Have you ever stood like on a teeter totter seesaw, whatever people call it in whatever region you are? Yeah. Like stood in the middle, yeah. but like with one foot on either on side, either but side. Yeah. but most of your body is where the fulcrum would be. So you're balanced there, but both sides will still move and you can still stay centered. Mm. You know what I mean? I think that's kind of the imagery of what we're talking about for me Yeah, is like still allowing these things to be moving. It is just allowing for the balance to be maintained within them. Yeah. 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 No, that's good. I like it. Um, yeah, I want to know the listeners' opinions on what are what's something they've done to bring balance to their energy consumption um, or to increase their energetic capacity. I would love to know that. Yes. And if it's six espressos a day. <laughs> I still I have, want to hear about I it. I still want to hear about it. <laughs> Please work towards finding a healthier solution, but I still want to hear about it. Oh, that's funny. Okay. Well, thank you all for listening and uh, being on this journey, even of the conversation with us. Yeah, it's been good. Yeah. Okay. We'll see you next time. See you. Hey, thanks for listening. Keep up with us along this journey by liking, subscribing, and becoming a member through YouTube. Members get exclusive access to bonus content with our guests, deeper dives into topics, and a look into other projects. We're glad to have you here. See you next time.